Well, hi there. Welcome to Fireside with Peter Atkinson. That's me. Uh, what, what we're doing here is uh, we, we bring back people that we used to hang out with a lot from back in the days of early Magic the Gathering and Wizards of the Coast, mm -hmm. and we talk to them. Uh, my co-host is Beverly Marshall Salem. Hi. Beverly and I worked together at Wizards throughout the, throughout the 90s, and she was our executive editor. And today, our guest is Darla Kennerud, who also worked in editing. So uh, Beverly's got the inside track on this uh, on this particular uh, interview today. So anyway, thanks. For, I'm excited about it. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. <laughs> so uh, all right, we dive in. Well, welcome, Darla. Thank you. It's good to have you. Yeah, I'm it, happy to be it's here. It's good to see you. Yeah, yeah I, this uh, is going to be really fun, I think. It's crazy, yeah. you know. Like we we do these. Um, you know, we run a company together. You know, we work. You know, back in the 90s, we're together every single day, see each other all the time, we go through crazy times and crises and mm -hmm. victories and defeats, and then, you know, you leave the company and you never see each other. It's, it's uh, well, so. except for, you know, at the movies or... <laughs> yeah, once in a while. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Darla and I both, once in a while we see each other at a yeah, movie, yeah. at a sip, because we both like to go, go yeah. a lot of movies. So, uh, so it's, it's great to have you. It's great to be able to catch up with you again and to do it right here on camera with everybody. So, yeah, I gotta love right. that. <laughs> so, um, so let's start with Darla. Who, who Dar Obviously, you ended up working at Wizards of the Coast, but let's talk a little bit about what, what was your life before Wizards of the Coast? Like. <laughs> well, um, I started working, I mean, I sort of my path toward editing um, started when I was in high school, and not just because I enjoyed writing and, you know, the English right, classes right. and things like that, but I actually had a class, um, I think it was my senior, junior, senior year, where I was not happy, I was not with uh, my favorite teacher, I was right. with a brand new teacher who's one of my good friends now. Um, and I was kind of like, you know, looking for extra challenge. And there were a couple people in the class who didn't do so well with the writing. They knew, you know, they had something to say right, and right. they could put it together. Right. So um, she put me together with uh, with those people. Like and a writing team or something like that. As a coach. As a coach. As a coach. Oh, because I could do mine and it was right. just to sort of give them a little bit of extra push. It wasn't a big thing. So that's the that's the gateway drug into editing. I think it's that was basically it. Basically, yeah. <laughs> and help these writers come along. Exactly. And then when I was in college, uh, I actually worked at the writing center um, for this is a very common thing for editors. Yes, it the is. The Writing Center. The Writing Center, which means it was a... That sounds was, as exciting as the chess club. For <laughs> us, it was uh, literally the room under the stairs. <laughs> They've since remodeled this huge, you know, gothic right. library, but we had this little room under the stairs And where was at this that at? Time. I, mean, I went like to Mount Holyoke College in Massachusetts. This is in Massachusetts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the right. Seven Sisters Colleges. Okay. And um, you could not work there as a, as a first year, so okay. I did it. started in my sophomore year and all the way through and also worked as a uh, as a writing coach tutor for uh -huh. ESL mm -hmm. English right. as a second language students and okay. I would work with both people um, who could just drop in so right. you're you're putting together a term paper right. you get to a point where you're stuck and you've talked to your friends you know something like right. that you could just drop in and say here's the paragraph where I, everything trouble, seems to be yeah. going wrong right, right. and then right. The, the person would would sort of talk you through it or for um, for many people especially people who are at the universities that uh -huh. were in the same area uh, right. you could do an appointment and that would be something much much okay. bigger so I well, worked well. with doctoral students mm -hmm. and things like right. that to help them everything from narrowing down the topic to you know, a final read right. through and customizing everything. So, mm -hmm. um, so you got a, a what degree did you end up with? I English, an English, an English degree. degree. Yeah, right. yeah. So, okay, I almost so doubled in art history. I have a minor in art history, but you know that's been oh. so relevant. Yeah, <laughs> I, like my minor in history. Yeah, <laughs> you know things hey. come up, and it was I love it. It was <laughs> almost <laughs> accidental. I mean, right. I just I was I was one class away from uh, from. A oh, double it was major. similar story. I was one class away from a. Um, a degree in math. Oh, okay. Uh, so, anyway, somehow you I got went from Massachusetts to Seattle. How did you? Well, I grew up here. 
Oh, this is okay. home. So it was oh, more so like, how did I end up Seattle over there? And then you went to school there. Yeah, and you got yeah, out and you, yeah. And you came here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I came here after school. But the reason that I that I focus on that instead uh -huh. of you know the little jobs that I had before I came to uh, to Watsi is that it really formed the way that I work with writers okay. mm -hmm. because okay. it's much more it's a conversation mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. a, a it's all about the communication it's not about right. give me your thing and I will correct it and then you will take it and go away I can do that oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah I, I absolutely do that sometimes even <laughs> still but it's some people not. want that the first time I a had lot of people uh, want uh, it our, when or we worked it. on the primal order you know mm -hmm. I'm so relieved oh, okay Here's the manuscript. It's an editing. Now I don't have to I'm do done. anything. I'm done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm done. I don't have to do anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, 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 no. You need to fix this and this and this and this and this. And oh, okay. Right. And right. you're like, well, can't you just <clears throat> fix that for me? And there are some things where, yes, it's absolutely we can and that's appropriate. But right. really, you know, it's also about, especially if it's going to be an ongoing relationship, mm -hmm. like right. in a company, right. it's also about making the authors better authors. Mm -hmm. you so, know, this so that their own voices can come out more. Or at least right. understanding what the language issues are. Absolutely. So they can work out how they want to deal with them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So let's take a let's get you up to Wizards of the Coast. Okay. So what, yeah. This how is did, how did you hear about us and what I, I really want to know why somebody who, you know, never <laughs> played magic before and didn't really, you know, self identify with gaming as a big part was saying, hey, oh, sure, I'll, I'll apply for that job. It was important that, well, first of all, it was an ad. So okay. those do work. I didn't know anybody from within the company. I right. can't tell you how many times I was asked in those first, you know, six months at least, mm -hmm. like, um, what part of Walla Walla I was from. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's where a lot of us yes, grew up. There were, many, there were many Walla Walla people involved and or University of Pennsylvania mm -hmm, where, where mm -hmm. the, the roots, right, roots right. of the company in many ways there so there was speculation uh, early on I th it was I think it was just a joke it had to be that because um, there were maybe 40 people mm -hmm. there when I joined the so, company and this is just to put the time frame on this this is in early 1994 yeah so in terms of the chronology of Magic came out in 93 so we had already released Alpha Beta Unlimited, mm -hmm. uh, Arabian Nights, Antiquities. So we're probably uh, into Legends, maybe. Legends had or, come out. Legends had come I'm out when sure you applied. Okay, so your mm -hmm. summer, summer of 1994. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, just after, June. just after Legends. Yep. June. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Right. Okay. So, so, yeah. so it was an ad, and right. um, I had worked uh, in two different places as, as a technical editor for okay. environmental geotechnical mm -hmm. companies. Right. right. Um, definitely was a bit of a change, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that was what you know I had been looking for. Uh, a, I was working part time as a technical editor right. and uh, I had had a full-time job once before you know to sort of get my training and I was looking for something that was full-time and right. so I was looking at all kinds of different things and really I didn't think there was much of a chance that it would be something that I would necessarily want, but right. I was willing to give you a shot. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm this so glad that you gave us a shot. I know. I know. Well, I just <laughs> so the opposite of everybody else that, you know, <laughs> applied for things. was all, oh, my God, I want to work at a game company. Right. <laughs> right. Well, it was really, as a, you know, I, I was yeah. a little abashed later because really it was that, I didn't know whether it was going to be a real job. And even right. in the interview, and, I was mm -hmm. like, so... <laughs> This is full time. Full time. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and she's like, yes, you have this game. You sell enough of these cards to hire people? <laughs> but I had this conversation with so many people over right. the years. Right. Now, not so much. But then, how can you have a full time job from making, from making working on a game? game. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Because they're yeah. thinking, you know, how many well, words are in yeah. Monopoly or mm -hmm. whatever they've grown mm -hmm. up with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and tabletop games, you know, and those were so much smaller then, so, yeah. mu so much uh, off the radar. And um, yeah, totally it's different. it's uh, totally different, yeah. right. So so what was, what was it about the idea of working for a game company that made you nervous? Was it really the, the stability of it, or was there something else, like, you know, they're dealing with magic I or think, No, no, nothing like that, nothing like that. I had I had done gaming before. It wasn't right. like I hadn't. It just wasn't, you know, something I'm going to march down the street with a banner and be like, right, I'm a right. gamer, because I didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, I, I played 
you know, D and D. I played Champions. I played right. Talisman. Those mm-hmm. are pretty. Those, those are serious games. You know. Yeah. You, 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 don't undersell your geek cred. No, you know? no, no. <laughs> yeah, you it had was, some. You know, but yeah. I was. But I really. But you was not played familiar magic. You magic. Were familiar with magic. No, right. it was definitely okay. something where I did research. You know, right. once it came out, and I was like, well, but. To be part of something that was really up and coming, right. I mean, mm-hmm. who knows how long it was going to last. Those kinds of mm-hmm. things are really right. difficult to tell. Right. But um, I thought that would be right. exciting. Right. Yeah. You know, I thought it might be fun. And right. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Well, it's funny we're spending a lot of time on the on sort of the hiring and interview, yeah, but yeah. but I think it it's fun. Big deal. But I think it's interesting. Like, like what? Let's 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 keep rolling with that. What what were you looking for when you put out that ad? Well, the main thing that I was looking for was just trying to find people who had the skills. Now, skills to the, edit. The, the raw editing skills. Can you take text, figure out what's the matter with it? Not just, you know, spelling and punctuation and stuff, but actual, is this clear? Is this concise? Is this getting things across that it needs to get across? Mm-hmm. And I had an actual test for that. Right. Oh, she says oh, this yes. like it's small. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I remember yes, yes. No. The, 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 yeah. Your, your, your spelling test, your editing test was legendary. Uh, was it other class? Like what, four pages? Something, yeah. You, Some, uh, I, you... I think you used a, 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 an R, a particular RPG supplement, which, which I probably yeah. should not name. Yeah, we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> but, yes. But, yeah, and, and I, Actual I, writing that had been turned into you by yes. an RPG which person. Which so much more fun than the editorial test that I had to take for the geotechnical work that oh, I did. Sure. <laughs> I have to say. And I did put extra errors in it. You oh, yeah. Extra errors in Which it. is okay. harder than you would think. It is, because they I've, have to look like a normal error. I've done the same thing, you know, created <laughs> right. updating the t- Beverly's right. mm-hmm. tests later on uh, when I was running the department, creating new tests for other places. Mm-hmm. So, so, you created, so, so you you took the test. Yeah. Evidently yeah. you passed. Oh, she, did, she, did, she was one of the best ones we ever had in the years of administering that thing. Totally aced it. Oh. Right. Yeah. Okay, so you, 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 so you, so you find... That, you, for raw skills, super important. Right able to get along with people and you know work with people really well because yeah. trying to work with R&D guys and you know that's, be able to that's game designers yeah. and developers for Research Magic the Gathering yeah being able to they're, they're not all, all as sweet as Richard Garfield <laughs> but you know being able to stand up to them and push back and say no I really think this needs to be clearer right. but also know when to back down and say okay yes you know I'm not sure about that but you're the designer we're going to go with what you want to do here right and the last thing I was looking for was somebody, I, Magic was my baby in terms of trying to make a game that was going to be more inclusive. Right. Yeah, you know, we were, right. that was a company-wide goal we had in the beginning, and Magic was the first thing that was, you know, really going to be ours where we could build the whole thing from the beginning and make it right. do those things. And I wanted somebody who cared about that stuff the yeah. same as I did and would be willing to, again, go to bat for things, but also know when to... Well, and I'm glad you brought that up because it's been one of the most uh, important contributions to Wizards and to my life was your involvement in Wizards and bringing mm-hmm. that vision to the company mm-hmm. of how we, you know, w- w- why do you use a masculine pronoun for somebody that you don't know if it's a bit boy or girl that's reading the rules, right? Mm-hmm. You know, stuff like that. Um, and, and so much more than that, but that's the traditional mm-hmm. example, right? Right. And it's just, um, I mean, it's one of the things I'm most proud of that, that we did really well back in the 90s so mm-hmm. um okay so you so you got the job yeah so suddenly <laughs> magic had a f- one person completely dedicated just to editing that one game line because yeah we'd never done that before I yeah, was always we, were doing, role, we were doing role playing products we were doing other trading card game products mm-hmm. family all right so so you were hired as the Magic the Gathering editor. Well, I think that there was actually some thought that I would be the uh, TCG editor, but mm. it lasted like a week. Trading card oh, games. The, the trading card games Because we were doing editor. multiple games. That's right, yep. that's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know how, how serious that was, but that was sort of, you know, over my head for a little bit. We were trying to find enough people to cover all the trading card games, right. and there was a brief concern that you might have to do more than one until we could get I see, up. But I the, see. But the, right. that, that got fixed. Yeah, yeah very yeah. quickly, yes. Because yeah. I was just like, what? So you're, <laughs> so you're brought into Magic the Gathering. Yeah. You don't know this game. I assume, did you spend a lot of time 
studying it? Did, did you play it oh, or yeah. did you study it? Like oh, how, both. 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 Uh, yes. And this is one of those those kinds of experiences that's you know makes you feel a little old talking about it because the way that I first became once I was at the mm -hmm. company became the most familiar with it was and Beverly wasn't in the office very much. She was she had been in a, a, mm -hmm. a bad accident, a yes. car accident, yes. and was just starting to come back into the office for a little bit at a time so she couldn't train me on this kind of thing but there was already so much information out there and there were of right. course other right. people in the company but one of the things that she did which I have never forgotten was <laughs> um, here are the bulletin boards read them the bulletin boards the online mm -hmm. the what we would now call forums oh the yes the <laughs> bulletin boards yes that's showing and our age isn't it been going for months yes, and months yes so we had uh, within Woods of the Coast oh, we had gosh. an a that's kind of like a Slack channel, mm -hmm. or, or pro, but it was Were all they done. No, no, no. I, had her, I had her on AOL. These are fans. Oh, you're talking about AOL. Well, yeah. we, well, we had both. We had an internal office thing, and then we also had, uh, yeah. We, yeah. We were very progressive so you in, go to in the more archives. ways than one yep, in the early yep. 90s. So yes. I go to the archive, and right. I mean, you know, the font's so reader-friendly, and a nice <laughs> courier, <laughs> and a little screen, and all of that. But uh, yeah, that was, uh, that you had was to dial definitely, in. we had to dial in, it was the obnoxious, you know. You know, you're being punished for wanting this information, <coughs> so I'm going to hurt your ears. Yes, mm -hmm. there was all that. And it was incredibly overwhelming. Right. And I thought for sure that I had made a huge mistake. <laughs> because <laughs> there was no way that I was going to get my head around this. Right. And then the other part of it was uh, learning to play. Right. And that was <laughs> that was also some done in a way that we would never nobody would do this mm -hmm. way uh one of the other uh editors who mm -hmm. who worked on a variety of things bob kruger uh, was like i'll show you you know right, i can show right. you how to play sure. okay so sure. the first thing you do is you have to build a deck he was like gives me this huge stack of cards and he said okay you need this many cards go through and pick out 30 <laughs> cards that you like the art <laughs> <laughs> and I was just uh, like, huh? shouldn't what? I worry about <laughs> the mechanics? Like, and he was like, it'll work out, you know, we might we might balance it a little bit, but you know, it'll, it'll work. work out. So I learned with a rainbow deck. <laughs> <laughs> and it did not go well. <laughs> uh, he was wow. great. And he, you know, he had a point that the the, right. the colors tended to have you know, similar themes and similar right, right. Uh, style for, right. the, for their art, but it was really not the best way. But, you know, without saying, here's what red does, here's what black does, you mm -hmm. know, right, all right, of that. Right. But that was just the, the very first um, experience. And then I started hanging out with the uh, the customer service guys a lot. And, you know, because... Speaking they, of which, we got Paul Peterson coming in yeah. in a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah He absolutely. started off with customer you, service. Did you play Beta League? No, no, I didn't mm -hmm. play any... That was an internal house right competition thing. Right, right. I could remember. I, I knew. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure I'd, I never participated in any of the organized mm -hmm. things. I would do little little bits of games. Sometimes mm -hmm. a lot of the time didn't even you wouldn't even finish a game. Mm -hmm. right. You know, because I just right. wanted to. Usually it was about figuring out some mechanic not how does this right. mechanic work necessarily, although that's helpful. But how does it fit in? Right. Why would you want to do else? that? Right. Because part of my job was going to be <coughs> looking at <coughs> new mechanics and words for new mechanics and having to figure out, even though, you know, the development guys had already mm -hmm. shaped it to fit right. into the hole, but I needed to look for what wasn't there. Right. Right. And to find the loopholes. Of course, magic is all about loopholes and, mm -hmm. and finding yes. the combinations and how does all this of interact that, with but, that if one of those is in play? But if if there's one that's unanticipated or if it's um, mm -hmm. just a much bigger deal, it's not a corner case, mm -hmm. then things yeah. change very, very yeah, quickly. Maybe we should back up and just kind of like um, uh, at the risk of being uh, stating the obvious, maybe not everybody really understands what an editor is, right? I mean, mm -hmm. people sort of imagine, like, the, like, let's put it in the context of what it takes to have a magic card in your hand, you know? Mm -hmm. Richard designed this amazing game, Richard Garfield, and. Um, uh, and then sets come out, and so there's a game, there's what we call the R&D department, which mm -hmm. was um, uh, game designers and developers would come up with the themes for the new sets and what all, all the cards would be, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and it would just be a big text file, right? Mm -hmm. And then the editing process, why don't you tell us kind of 
where you fit in the middle of this whole journey of making a magic card. Well, sure. and especially at the, you know, start with the way it was when you started. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, Beverly is obviously very familiar with, with right. this part because, uh, we, you know, when you started out, when I started out, it was very much, uh, we're doing all this work. There were like, I don't know, three to four people working heavily on mm -hmm. the, the development of the mechanics and they would get it to where they wanted. And and so that and what set was it that you worked on first? My first set was Fallen Empires. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so there was a group of people working on Fallen Empires. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I might Do you hear, remember who any do you remember who was involved in it? Well, I mean, gosh, um, I don't remember if Charlie was there yet. Uh, Jim was over Charlie there. Catino. Jim Lynn. Mm -hmm. Jim Lynn's going to be on our show in mm -hmm. three, four weeks. Elias Scaff Elias was there the whole time. Will be on our show eventually too. Um, yep. Okay. Great. A couple more people that I'm just blanking yeah, out on, yeah. and I feel terrible I know. because yeah. mm -hmm. they were I'd all put you really on the spot. great. Yeah, they were all great. They, we loved them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah, okay. they were really, really right. great to work with. Uh, but so, so they give you this file with a bunch of cards, right? And basically it was just here's the file go away we have other things to think about now because right. you know you're right. thinking and their their heads are already into the next set but right. it's at a completely different stage because they're concepting and they're thinking about you know what does the line need next mm -hmm. and all of that right and it was right. just a few people you know unlike you didn't have a huge team just for development and just for design and mm -hmm. you know it was just a few people right. so right. Uh, that was <coughs> the way it started. So then I would take these these uh, cards and look at what does it actually say. And you have to look at you know the punctuation and things like that. Not just because is it right or is it wrong? Is it you know grammatically correct? Right. But also things change with a comma or right. the order of the words. Right. If you right. have a series of things and you're qualifying it, like, you know, you want to say it's it's a, a blue mermaid, you know, tower and mm -hmm. wizard, so how many of those things are blue? Right. Mm -hmm. Right, which right. in when you're just having a conversation, it either doesn't matter or it gets across or somebody can ask a question. Mm -hmm. You can't have that. Right. You cannot have that on, mm -hmm. uh, on a magic card. So there's that sort of thing, but then there's also because magic is so focused on timing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and that at that was point, always the hardest thing to get. <coughs> yeah, and and you know, we had interrupts. And timing, meaning uh, the order at which, uh, mm -hmm. it, like when you're playing a game and somebody plays a card, uh, there's oftentimes there's fast effects, and these fast effects interact with each other, and right. and figuring out the order of well, I counter who, your counter. Who shoots first, basically, yeah. and, and those and are the which one takes effect first, right? right. And those exactly. are the stories. You know, players love that mm -hmm. because it was mm -hmm. it really brought a lot of life mm -hmm. into right. the game. It's not all you know just a right. strategy. Oh, in your, your turn, head. then my turn, then your turn, then and my then turn. somebody plays something, right. and everybody around the table is like, ah, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. what did you just do? And, and right. you mm -hmm. know, right. then you have the just all kinds of things that can mess with with right. other people. And knowing how far back, you know, if you if you play an mm -hmm. interrupt and you're like, but I just played three spells, how much, what does it do? Mm -hmm. um, what the individual spells did sometimes affect it, not just mm -hmm. what type they were, because this was right. pretty early on mm -hmm. and things changed over time. <coughs> All of that sort of thing. You can't look just at the words on the page. Right. Like if you mm -hmm. were to give me a paragraph of, you know, specs about your, your film set, I could look at it, but without knowing how it fits into what else you have, mm -hmm. right. you know, I'm not going to be able to really make it the best that it could be. Mm -hmm. right. right. There's always right. context. And right. with something like any kind of a game, when right. you're looking at game rules, mm -hmm. but especially something where all the rules, you've got your structure, your mm -hmm. skeleton, right. it's the rule book, right. but all the rules are on the cards, mm -hmm. Right. Right. you know? So if that's spread out, and a bunch of them are already out in the environment. Mm -hmm. yeah. so you right? can't fix those. <coughs> you can't change those. It's I mean, so until you do a whole I've new been, set. It's so funny. So lately I've been playing with some really old cards, like, like mm -hmm. Alpha Beta, you know, mm -hmm. original Magic cards. Um, and uh, just because I wanted to go back to a simpler time, you oh. know, when I could, <laughs> where, where, where the cards oh were God. simple. Although the, not all the cards were simple, but still there was something about, you know, when we were playing Magic in, in that era, 
the the game was simpler in terms of what all the cards could do. Now, Magic the Gathering, it seems like every card has two, three, or four things that it can do. And mm-hmm. you have all these cards with multiple things. Mm-hmm. You know, it's rare you run across something that's like Grizzly Bears. You know, mm-hmm. it costs one G and it's oh, yeah. a two-two creature. Could, that's I, it. I've right? got the art in my head. As yes, I know. Yes, I know. me too. <laughs> right. So, uh, uh, it's, it, so it's simple enough that for an older guy like me, I can keep the whole game state in my head. I can't do mm-hmm. that with modern Magic, right? Mm-hmm. So... Well, that's uh, where you learned it, too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You, yeah. It's like... Uh, oh, but anyway, I was like, oh, I had a point to this. So where was I going? Yes, I remember. The, um, uh, looking at old magic cards, how before we got into templating everything, yes. where we, we got into every card, you know, has a strict way. And I think that you were very instrumental in designing this, if I, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, figuring out how do we template these cards so they all kind of read the same way so we know uh, there's a lot of legacy about what the meanings are by how we word it right mm-hmm. so then you go back and look at an old magic card and it it's just like um it's just funny it's just <laughs> like, <laughs> like 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 i i could see the value of the template you know the templating um was kind of subtle as it came in it just looked like a tightening up but then you go back and look at the old cards mm-hmm. after playing magic with with really well templated cards for now for so many years you look at the original cards and like Oh my God! <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Well, some of that was just we didn't know, right? Yeah, of course, we of course didn't. not. We yeah. had no idea. How oh, you edited important. that. I wasn't being critical of your work. Well, for no, sure. I'm not, and I'm not trying to be defensive either. But it's you know we had no idea what things were going to be important, right? Exactly. And which right. things weren't. I mean, knowing that destroy was going to become like this whole word that had this you know <laughs> three paragraph definition of exactly what it meant. Right. Yes. Even if you hadn't written that definition down yeah. somewhere, it's in the player's heads. Yeah. Right? right. But even more than that, think about what players were familiar with mm-hmm. overall outside mm-hmm. of Magic. Right. This was the first of its kind. This is the first training card so, game. So, yeah, I mean, when we did play tests, this yeah. is later yeah. on, we did play tests, we had to explain to people that you don't pick up all your cards and hold it you know, in your mm-hmm. hand and, you know, or put them all together. Yeah, you don't shuffle all the cards together. All of those things. <laughs> you have your cards. She's These got her are my cards. cards. <laughs> those are your cards. And yet somehow we play against each other. Mm-hmm. What? It's not mm-hmm. solitaire. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so... we actually had play tests run right. where we had to go back in and change the introductory script right. because you know, people weren't getting it. Yeah. They were yeah, not getting it at all. It was a foreign concept. Yeah. Yeah, I remember demoing magic, going to conventions, you know, like mm-hmm. uh, so there's first, gamers. And, and you know, in the in that period from nineteen ninety three when it came out to like the next first two years, let's say. Yeah. Um, when it was still mm-hmm. important to go out and demo. Eventually Absolutely. we didn't have to do that anymore. But um yeah, it was just it was so complicated for people. Mm-hmm. It was so different from any game that they had played before. Like what? I have to have each of us have to have our own deck. So if we want to get into this game, why can't I just share his deck? If we want to get into this game, I have to buy two starter decks. That doesn't make sense, Mm -hmm. you know. It's just messing with people's idea of what a game was, Mm -hmm. and even if they thought they got it, they would still run into a wall. Yeah, I think that was the biggest obstacle in trying to sell the game. The biggest selling point in selling the game was the art. Yeah, they look at all this beautiful art because, you know, uh, we didn't have the market didn't have so much as as much. Beautiful fantasy color art, mm-hmm. right? But the ratio of just... pictures to words. Yes, exactly. the ratio. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, lots of uh, it was. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. Uh, templating, you. So what templating is is yeah. taking something. There's a couple different things that are involved. There's uh, using a, a keyword. Mm-hmm. So just a shorthand where all you need to see on mm-hmm. there is. I mean, think about the card types or a sort of templating. You could say, mm-hmm, this is mm-hmm. a land. Oh, that's all we need to tell players. Everything else that you need to know about land is in your rule book. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and it's right. not really something that, that people struggle with because it's, you know, right. so basic. But it's really the same kind of an idea mm-hmm. as destroy or, mm-hmm. you know, any yeah. of those other summon or mm-hmm. any of those other things. <coughs> The other kind of templating is when you have an effect that's more complicated that you want it to work the same way. So look at, um, you've got your your card that you've played, but it also has an ability on it Mm -hmm. that has a cost. There's so many different ways that you could explain Mm -hmm. that to people. Mm -hmm. You could say, in order to play this ability, you need to tap, you know, whatever it is that you're gonna have them do. But instead, 
you know, we came, there's a way a that formula, it's, basically. Yeah, a yeah. formula to say, and it's important to say the cost is whatever appears before the colon. colon. Yes. Because for oh, a long man. time, it was just the mana <coughs> cost was before the colon, and then mm -hmm. there might be something somewhere mm -hmm. else that says, right. in addition, you have to destroy mm -hmm. another mm -hmm. card, put it into your graveyard, you know, something like mm -hmm. that. That was a game changer when we put all the costs right. up front, and it was about making the experience easier, right? And more just intuitive, more intuitive, exactly mm -hmm. right. for the players, right. so that they can not spend so much time trying to figure out what, what it's the supposed card does to and do and mm -hmm. keep their mind on how to absolutely be competitive. Yeah. Right? Well, and if yeah. you recognize a wording from another card, exactly. then you say, "Oh, I know what this does because it's like the other one that does that. Only yes. this one is blue." Right, <laughs> and <laughs> and the the other side of that coin, which was a really important, uh, was I don't I remember who it was who explained this. It could have been you who explained it to me early on uh, about wording. I I was very much uh, we need to have things have the same wording, but I don't know how to. Why is that important? I knew it was important, but I couldn't quite mm -hmm. you know right, figure out right. like how do I explain this you know to right. to the R and D guys, and. Um, it's really so that if you come, we're playing a game, yeah. and we have two cards that are very different, but they have an effect that is either the same or very, very similar. If they're worded very differently, we're or going to assume differently, right? You know, if there's one word in there, or if something is in a different format, right, right. we're gonna assume that they maybe they don't work the same way. Right. And right. the thing is is it doesn't have to be most people playing mm -hmm. this have mm -hmm. make that assumption. It just has to be a vocal minority. Mm -hmm. right. Because anything that causes arguments at the table, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean other than, you know, just trash talking kind of fun right. stuff, but true arguments <coughs> at the table <coughs> becomes a much bigger deal. And when it makes the Pro it Tour fun. came along, mm -hmm. yeah. it you know, oh, stakes right. were raised. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, we're going to get to that. Yes. Yeah. So, but that's so the, why, yeah. by the way, I had you reading the bulletin boards. Sure. In the first place, just because <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I had, yeah. for a while after the first Magic came out, I was supposed to be answering questions on AOL because everybody had many hats and we didn't have customer service yet, and and it was just okay. Well, you can do that. Sure, you can do that. You know the game. Right. And. Learning. So people would be asking about what, how things yeah. worked, or yeah. why is this card and this card, you know, which way, how are they different? Because the wording is different, so how are they different? Oh, no, it's like, oh, well, uh. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. So, we made that one in January and we made this one in yeah, September. But, exactly. <laughs> so, so can you yeah. can you remember any examples I, um, of a specific card or mechanic like destroy or something like that where? It was um, a real struggle. Like there was maybe a lot of um, uh, and anything where you really had to get into big, heavy debate with R and D in order to. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much <coughs> debate, and I'm terrible at remembering, remembering specific, yeah, you know, yeah. examples. But you know what we would run into was um, there's something that that I tell every every game company that I work with, especially anything where people are trying to find those loopholes. Right, right. um, it's something that that's really important that who I'm working with understands is that they have to decide as a company how much of a jerk they allow their players to be in the game, <laughs> right? And I don't mean that in a mean way, mm -hmm. but it's like you know, is it okay for me to interpret this? so that I can now swoop in and stop that spell or, right. you know, this doesn't just apply to this one angel you have on the table, it's all of them or, you know, right. things like that where it's not <coughs> quite, you know, so clear because right. once you get into, remember, we've only got, yeah. you know, this much room. Right. And, right. and it has this to work after you translate it into German and it gets <laughs> twice as long. Right. Three times. <laughs> yeah, well. 32%. <laughs> Actually, but uh, yeah, yeah, translations mm -hmm. are actually another another big problem mm -hmm. uh, for partially for that reason. But also, right. you don't want to have what is essentially mm -hmm. maybe it's not that complicated in play. Mm -hmm. but you don't want to have it taking up all the space on right, you know right, for every right, single right. card. We want to have room for for flavor text for the little right, story right. asides mm -hmm. and things like that. Those are really important. Um, but you have once you get into to taking apart like what right. we're doing what right. I'm doing is actually trying to break the words mm -hmm. 
R&D is going to look at it and say, how can I play this so that it breaks the mechanics? I'm looking at it to say, how can I interpret this in a weaselly way right. <laughs> that will allow me to do something for my benefit? That I shouldn't do. Right. You know? That you shouldn't be able to do in the game. Right. And right. then, well, you do that first, <coughs> and then you determine... I, I, th I have an example. Like, I have a perfect example. I first started playing Magic, the Sarah Angel. Mm -hmm. I, I was actually videotaped at War Games of West in Albuquerque saying that, oh, the great thing about a Sarah Angel is that because you don't have to tap it when you tack, then the turn, turn you summon it, you can go ahead and attack with oh, it. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I said that and I, uh, I got back. The R&D people were just like, what? Peter, <laughs> you got that wrong. <laughs> that's not the way it works. Well, that's how yeah, the going so, works. Yeah. And then well, we had to yeah. invent something serious. But what it, what it means is that sometimes you, when you start looking at this, especially if there are, you know, a category of things can right. do this, but it right. can't do that. If you start really getting it, I mean, just imagine that you are playing against somebody who's going to argue every little right. Right. point mm -hmm. that you're like, that is clearly yeah. not what is meant. I had a player like that at Gary Conn recently. Yeah, I know what you mean. Exactly. You know, and, <laughs> but the thing is, is that the whole point of, of the game, of right. all of the games, mm -hmm. you know, that are like this is, is to have that it's just you know right when the company right. then answers the questions yeah. you can then say no you can't actually do that that establishes a line right mm -hmm. right for magic you can do most of the stuff right right because it's always read the card right mm -hmm. so let's talk a, a little bit about fallen empires i want to get get oh, into okay. this mm -hmm. because uh you know we're, we're well into our time here <laughs> uh so your first your first editing project was fallen empires but Fallen Empires was uh, ended up being a problematic well card known. set for it is well known. Uh, for, uh, mm -hmm. It is well known. So, <laughs> for those of you who might be curious, what the heck I'm talking about with Fallen Empires? Uh, when Magic first came out in 1993, sales of Magic was just going up and to the right at an exponential pace. Uh, every card set was getting bigger and bigger, sometimes by several multiples. Mm -hmm. We're always it takes several months to print a set, so we're having to. Uh, try to forecast what the demand for a card set would be. Uh, meanwhile, our printers are expanding their capacity, and and we you all you know when you're in a situation like this that eventually the bubble's going to burst, but you just don't know when, and so mm -hmm. you just try to go along. Well, Fallen Empires was the bursting of the magic bubble. It was the first card set that we um, printed enough to fulfill demand, and as soon as when you do that with a highly sought after collectible, then there's the problem of collectors jumping out of the product. Uh, product. Mm -hmm. There was um, all sorts of uh, problems with retailers not wanting to take all their orders from distributors, mm -hmm. uh, and distributors you know, wanting to reduce their orders with us, and, and so on and so forth. So it ended up being really the first crisis of the company mm -hmm. in the magic era. Mm -hmm. and. I was and, there. And your first it experience. Wasn't me, and I was so proud of it. You were so proud of all the <laughs> Oh, parties. yeah. I remember having the, having the big, uh, they were press sheets, but we used to proof on things that were the size of press sheets. So you've got right. all the cards laid out on this huge uh, printing uh, printing sheet behind my, my desk after going through the whole thing, the right. finals. And, you know, like I asked Bob, I asked Brad, anybody that I felt could find something wrong with this. Right. Because mm -hmm. I thought So you're looking at done. proofs. You're looking at... Mm -hmm. um, yeah. After you're done editing and mm -hmm. it's gone into art, uh, everything they, comes together. There's some mm -hmm. uh, pro pre production process. Yep. They're assembling, es essentially, uh, the, the, all the different cards under these big sheets. Yeah. And, then they <clears throat> and then they print it out and mm -hmm. send it to you so that you can look at it mm -hmm. and see this is actually what the cards are really going to look yes. like with the art and everything yes. else. And that's there's what no, you, that's what there's you're no digital at. proofing right. at, that, at that stage. You couldn't look at how everything came together. I mean, yeah. maybe in pre-press you could, you know, right. if you have that kind of equipment, but that was not how we did right. it. Right. Right. Um, so you'd mm -hmm. have these huge, I mean, huge, they were like, I don't know, 11 yeah. by, yeah. Yeah. I, big, I mean, 11 suits. cards uh, by, mm -hmm. 17 or something I don't right. know what it was but they were huge and there would be multiple versions yeah. of of each card depending on the rarity and whatever mm -hmm. algorithm they mm -hmm. used it was some R&D I think it was 11 by magic. 11 by the way because there's 121 card spots on a sheet okay I, I seem to remember it being rectangular. Yeah, I thought it was rectangular. Well, yeah, but, but the cards are rectangular. The cards are rectangular. Oh. So, of course, it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, guess so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Geometry wins again. Yay. So, anyway, yes. Yeah, so, it's huge, but to proof, I mean, you can't. All right, here's my, you know, 
Boeing uh, metal desk, right? right? Mm -hmm. Here's my giant yeah. computer that does like almost nothing. And where are you going to do this? So on the floor. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. on, All on the floor outs. with post-it notes and you know mm -hmm. everywhere. The field. And just because so you have you know a grizzly bear over here does not mean that it matches the grizzly bear that is over here or the one that is over here because they were all made and printed onto to the sheet individually right. so it wasn't proofing you know right. however many say that there were right. 80 cards in the set it was proofing every single Insta instance of every card yeah and there were some close calls right um, it meant where something you know I, there would be a, one where so a to be clear like a switched. particular car mm -hmm. like grizzly bears which wasn't in the <laughs> fallen empires but, no, but, but like right, for right. example if it appeared on uh, more than one location mm -hmm. on the press sheets there was no sort of dynamic linking back mm -hmm. to sort of no. a master image of what this card looks like mm -hmm. uh so you, you had the risk of like it would oh, look yeah. differently and oh, different. well yeah. and if you think it's bad to have a lapse of wording between two similar cards having a lapse of wording between two instances of the same card yeah that's really bad that's like, that's that's that that's like editor did it ever happen trauma nightmare scenario did it ever happen in history of magic do, do you know where two um, versions I don't think so. not on your watch no yeah, no, I, I don't, don't think so. I don't, I don't remember that happening. We had other we errors, had, we had, like we had, Alpha. We had the Cyclopean Tomb didn't have the casting costs, and we had other types of errors. We had, like, like that, I think we, there there was one early on where we had the wrong artist on one instance. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. And I um, had, oh, gosh, what set was that, was that that had the Aurochs in it? Was that um, the, one of the Ice Age, Age sets? I think, yeah. yeah, I had something where a change was made to the file. I had to actually go up to pre-press, so Jefferson, who you'll right. see, mm -hmm. you know, right. mm -hmm. and get what had been sent from the printer, just for myself, right. because, right. you know, we mm -hmm. see something come, we hear a complaint, right. and immediately we're like, where did that happen? So, mm -hmm. you know, we keep everything to go back through, right. figure mm -hmm. out where it happened in the process so we can try to keep it from happening again and feel better about, yeah. you know, our ability. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was a change that was made to the file after it had been sent to the printer. Oh, okay. After it had been sent to the printer, and I was mortified. Oh, I'm it sure. was like a it yeah. was a verb mm -hmm. change, they like changed from was the verb. to were or something like that. <laughs> well, and how did but that we, even happen? It went exactly. from magic be gathering. But see, it sounds kind of ridiculous because you know the right. magic players don't care about that. Oh, 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 oh. magic players care about everything. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just wrong. It was just one of these things where, you know, anybody <coughs> reading the sentence, if they knew what Oryx were, so, which, you know. Yeah, so you had, so you had uh, some real emotional investment in oh, yes. Fallen Empires. And then a when it bit. ended up being such a, a pr from a business perspective, such a problematic uh, release for Wizards. And we, we did a whole turnaround of our mm -hmm. strategy afterwards and everything yeah. like that. How did that feel for you? Well, luckily for me, uh, there's a big lag between mm -hmm. when you're working on the set before yeah. printing and when it comes out and then there was a, another slight lag after it came out before people really realized right. how much there was on the market right. mm -hmm. um, and I actually heard that that had to do with pre or uh, pre-orders yeah, not pre-printing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. you know, this is just if you're gonna well, don't necessarily. Yeah, it, people were were padding their orders because of the yes. Well, what had happened popularity. is that we 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 were always sorting the market, not intentionally. We would we would make a plan a flag about how much we think the market would bear based on also how much we could print. Right. And then by the time it would come out, the distributors would be increasing mm -hmm. their orders because retailers are increasing their orders, and then mm -hmm. we're and then and then we end up cutting back say okay we're going to send everybody only a third of what they ordered mm -hmm. well that trains people to over order mm -hmm. right right, right. <coughs> and it's and not so, like they're just on press right. where you can just keep yeah you know so you do a it's print not print on demand right and so right. uh mm -hmm. so print on demand. Oh, yeah God. yeah so we, we, we ended <laughs> up uh, yeah so so we ended up um yeah. uh so we actually you know so they bring train they're always assuming that they was going to get cut but then yeah. fallen empires was like no here's your whole order you mm -hmm. ordered, you know, this many cards, well, and, and here they are. we did tell people. I remember, yeah, talking, yeah. you know, talking, uh, having to edit We tried thing. to warn them. There's I remember having to edit a bulletin for the sales department that they were going to send to every, every distributor and say, look, this is, you know, we are going to print 
right. whatever you order. So don't go so, nuts. But but the the retailers were having people pre-order yeah, without right. paying, and so right. people mm -hmm. right. would, were hedging their you bets. Had, you had phantom mm -hmm. buying at every at yes. every level. So you had phantom gamers buying. who had yeah. not been able to get cards in the past ordering what they wanted from several different stores. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you have stores who not who were not getting what they wanted from in the past. So they were placing orders at different mm -hmm. distributors, mm -hmm. and so there's there's all this fake demand that's mm -hmm. coming up and and so plus uh, it followed legends <laughs> yeah. yes. i mean oh. you know who wants to have the set that follows legends everybody loved legends you know it's all characters it's mm -hmm. exciting it's powerful right. well, actually yeah. the dark was in between yeah there, oh the dark, dark in right between. yeah, yeah right dark, so mm -hmm. but you know it's dark so, so i you don't see it. So, <laughs> I, I, so I want to tell you this. So I want to tell you a story about Fallen Empires because I think it might brighten your day, help you feel better about that. that it, it was not. It, it wasn't a whole tragedy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, even though we printed too much and we had all this history, um, all those issues with all that, it was about uh, two years or three years later. I think it was in. So Fallen Empire was ninety four. So I think it was ninety seven. I was at the Gamma Trade Show, mm -hmm. and. Um, we had promised those distributors, like, mm -hmm. you know, you will eventually sell all this product. And the distributors, mm -hmm. no, 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 we're going to burn it. We're not going to be able to sell no, all this right. product. It's not, no, no way. And it's like, no, at the end of the day, people are going to play the game and they play the players want cards. And, and mm -hmm. okay, so the speculators are out of the market. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Eventually, just, you will sell all these cards. And they didn't believe me. Well, three years later, at the Gamma Trade Show, I'm at the Wizard of the Coast booth. And all of a sudden, like, there's this distributor. His name was Mike Hurdle, and he was a real big guy with a gravelly voice and a very loud, kind of obnoxious um, sort of uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. um, I say that in all endearing uh, <laughs> ness <laughs> as I try and, uh-oh. Uh, anyway, so all of a sudden, I hear his voice yelling out across the, the trade hall, Peter Atkinson, I need to talk to you. And like everybody in the trade, everybody just <laughs> shut up. Like, like, and it was kind of this big open area, and like everybody just quiet. Mm -hmm. And Wizards was right across from this door, and he starts walking across this open area towards me. And he, as he's coming, he says, "Peter Atkinson, you need to print more Fallen Empires." Oh my God! <laughs> I'm sold out. I'm sold out. <laughs> the the oh price of God. those cards has gone <gasps> up over the discounted rate, and we need yeah. more Fallen Empires cards. And I could have kissed him. Oh my god! I could have just kissed <laughs> him right oh there. Gosh, there. That's great. So it was. Yeah, it was. Now, the, I never really felt too bad. It would have been great to have something that that you know was this huge, exciting set for everybody right, to talk right. about. The only part of it was, um, you know, later on for several years. I mean, actually many years, when people would ask, uh, "Oh, so what was your first set?" And be like, <coughs> "Oh, it was Fallen Empires," and you know, I was not ashamed of it. I didn't have anything to, to do with, right, you know, right. the perception of it was almost entirely about just how much there was on the market right. and how easy it was to get. And uh, which is, you know, just right. It was a good was, set. It, yes. There was nothing wrong with the set. It was but just too much. But it's hard. that moment and the, the look, you know, mm -hmm. when people are like, oh, Oh, sorry. Oh. You poor oh, thing. You poor yeah, thing. And I'm like, it was one plus, you know. I you know, remember meeting with R and D and talking mm -hmm. about, you know, what are we going to name the, you know, right. participating in naming the cards, and mm -hmm. I mean, the concepts are there, but you know, we had the whole whiteboard experience of mm -hmm. the different right. nations and right. who's fighting who, and mm -hmm. you know, right. giving Jim Lynn uh, a lot of a lot of uh, lip <laughs> about uh, he really wanted to to have one of the guys. The, one of the lobster guys named Sebastian. So okay. we still call him right. Sebastian. There you you go. know, we're like, yeah, yeah okay, hey. whatever. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. It was just, yes, you get very invested. And it's a lot of work in a very, very short right. mm -hmm. period of right. time. So now, though, looking back, I mean, Fallen Empires was your first set, but you worked at Wizards for 10, 11 years? 11 and a half. 11 yeah. and a half years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Always as the lead magic editor? No, no, no I was, uh, I was, so for one, less nine months, yeah. I was just magic editor because there was right. only one. Right. And then uh, we started hiring up and so I became the lead at that point. And then in uh, 2000, right. Beverly left yeah. and I became the executive editor. For the whole company? Yes, at that point it was, well, everything's changing. 
right? Yeah, okay. So if yeah, right. It's, it's a fun thing to try to explain on a resume because I was in exactly the same position right. from 2000 until I left in, at the end of 2005. But I had like three different roles in that. Right. Well, two, right. but they right. were sort of sandwiched in between where it was uh, TCGs, uh, board games, and some support for the fiction line when they were putting out mm-hmm. some books, which seemed, right. you know, right. sporadic. Um, and then in, I'm going to say, nine, uh, gosh, 2002 or something like that, um, they rearranged things with the RPG side, mm-hmm. and they said everything. So then I was executive editor over the entire company and mm-hmm. all of the, th- except for the fiction line. Right. Because that was always separate. Uh, for a couple years, mm-hmm. and then they were like, yeah, we don't really like the way that that's, you know, we want to change that up, and because they were just really trying to find their feet with with the RPG side in right, particular, right. and you know, right. you want to do right mm-hmm. by something right. like uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. So then I went back to doing exactly what I'd been doing before, which mm-hmm. was TCGs and board right. games and the occasional right. card game and all that mm-hmm. sort of thing. But they changed my title, right? So. <laughs> You know, whatever. So you were pretty yeah. hands-on with magic for the entire 11 years, so. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Now, there was a, yeah. when I became executive editor, uh, for probably the next year, I was still involved in magic, right. you know, hands-on. Right. After that, you know, I had a lead. She's, she was incredible. Right. Um, you know, she, I, she's still running everything now right. as far as magic goes. Um, so it's a succession. Absolutely, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And, you know, it was, it was hard. Yeah. To be able to say, oh, I have to proof this, you know, complicated strategy board game that I don't right. play myself, but I'm right. going to work on this because you can't do magic. You can help out, but you can't mm-hmm. really do magic if it's only going to be a portion of your time. Right. Right. Yeah. So magic has to be in your head. There's too much to remember all at right. once. Right. That makes a lot of sense. For there to be room for other rules and right. things. Right. 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 But we right. definitely we had a lot of teamwork. Um, you know, from the from when I joined, and there were there were only a few of us, mm-hmm. uh, all the way to when I had like 13 people. Th- where back reading, which is when you're mm-hmm. done with something, you've edited it, you've gone through it with R and D, you have. Uh, proofread it, everything is clean, so now you're going to give it to somebody else on the team, preferably somebody who is not necessarily familiar with that game line, right. and they're going to see if they can find anything, and usually it's something small, every once in a while it's something big, but that guarantees, you know, right. you get the right. fresh eyes. You can't just hand it to anybody. Right, right. But, um, so in that way I got to stay, uh, right. and, and the discussions, of course, mm-hmm. because when you're the department, how right. do you talk right. about everything right. with everybody? Um, but yeah, it was always uh, always a big part of what I was doing, and I still, when I talk about it, and I talk about things that they're doing now, I mean, mm-hmm. it's been longer, you know, yeah. since yeah. I, well, about the same amount of time since I, since I left. I can't do math in my head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> longer since I left than, than yeah, I was there, and yet... 2005, right? I still say, yeah, yeah. At the end of uh, December, because everything yep. was in December then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I still say we. Yeah. You know, I'm I know. still. I do too. I'll be like, yeah. well, you we. know, we, not not what I'm talking about when I was there, uh. but what I'm talking about what they're doing now, or right. you know, or we right. always we always had a hard time with such and such, and it's mm-hmm. starting to get a little better. But mm-hmm. I think part of that is just a natural part of the kind of job right. that that is that mm-hmm. editing is, um, and I think part of it is just the kind of editor or the kind of. You, Person, I don't know, that I am. Pretty, I get very uh, attached. Pretty fond memories? Yeah, yeah, for the most part. <laughs> I would have I would have liked to have had a little more sleep. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, you know when, uh, when you're But you boss, know, you think about it. I mean, mm-hmm. Magic the Gathering, Wizards of the Coast, Dungeons and Dragons. Wow, it was... We did great things. That's, That's why like, you do it when you're in your 20s, yeah. in dude, your dude. early 30s. It's <laughs> like, honestly, it really is like having children. Yeah. The the days are long, but the years are short. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And the I days have are kids. Long, the years are short. And yeah. it is hard. And you know. And yeah. there are times when things just blur together, and you're not really sure what day it is because you've been at the right. office for you know, mm-hmm. forty two yeah. hours yeah. or whatever it is. You know, 
<laughs> because when when I joined, we were still in the the original. I mean, not the right. basement building, right. but the, right. the, the mm -hmm. right. social security building. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, we had all kinds of tricks. I had a certain playlist that I would play mm -hmm. at night. <laughs> you know, I had a certain time mm -hmm. that I would stop mm -hmm. and play certain right. songs that would be right. really loud. I had um, there's no heat. Yeah. Overnight, so mm -hmm. I had uh, yes, <laughs> particular yes. things to I mean, that was warm. one thing One thing about those days of Wizards. I mean, you could go into the office at any time and yeah. the mm -hmm. lights would be on. There'd be mm -hmm. people working. I, you mm -hmm. know, oh, yeah. going uh, uh, lots of times, at two or three in the morning or whatever, and like, oh, yeah, people yeah. working. Well, well later on, you... Scaff brought in yeah. a sleeping bag and yeah. sleeping under his desk. I, yes. well, when, I, when we got <laughs> successful enough, I could have an office. I had a couch in my office oh. so I could take naps, <laughs> yes. and, you know, yeah. for long hours. So, um, so. Uh, before we, uh, we we're about out of time, but I'd oh, love to man. hear. I know Ooh, I'd love to hear. Um, like, so what, what if we? What are you doing these days? Anything you can tell us about what you're uh, working on? Yeah, yeah. So right now I've been freelancing for uh, for a few years, so I have a little more more control over. Freelance I, I editing. Went to yeah. Freelance editing. I went yeah. to another another game company, and uh, you know was there for like seven years and then I realized that there were these people who lived in my house and you know maybe they were nice but I should get to know them a little bit so it was a, a it was another really intense right position and so yeah. I wanted more more control so that's what I'm doing yep um let's see the the most exciting things coming up I think would be I work for um Steamforged okay and a lot of different things uh right. that we that we do but they have a Kickstarter. I don't think it's started yet, but it's coming up for a board game for Devil May Cry 5. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's super exciting because mm -hmm. I, the first one I did for them was Dark Souls board yeah. game, and the, the reception was great. And most of it just having to do with how they developed the right. game mm -hmm. to feel like the video game, so not really anything mm -hmm. to do with me, right. but it's still you know very mm -hmm. exciting. Ironic. I'm not a video gamer at all. Right. So mm -hmm. no so, matter what in this industry, it's going to come around to video games. No yeah. <laughs> so, on the other into one. <laughs> yeah. On the other end, um, I also do work for uh, Alderac. Yes. Oh, AEG. Yes, and that's that's really fun because oh, a great. lot of those games are are a lot more casual. Right. And one of the ones that um, I don't think it's out yet um, was uh, Curios. So it's this. Uh, game where you, you you're collecting these uh puzzle pieces sort of right. uh, uh -huh. that are artifacts right but you don't know what they're worth you have yeah. to deduce what they're oh, worth interesting um throughout the course of the game okay. based on what you see and so everything. you like this game well, well that, that's, yeah, a, that's yeah. a recommendation a yeah. dollar can read recommendation it looks curios by by Alderac. AEG. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah love AEG, but john Sinzer and i are, are good friends so uh, awesome yeah, yeah. yeah they've so got a lot of great, great. stuff and yeah. I, I really like to to see the gamut, you know. Right. Every once in a while, I did a I did a game that uh, is called Goatfish, and it's exactly what you would think. It is a goatfish goat. kind of ge game that is all goats. It's goats. hilarious. Okay. Goats. Okay. okay. No kidding. Goats. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so it's, it's really nice to have you know that kind of variety. It's, it's really I gotta fun. find my husband the goat game. Oh yeah. Well, on I'm that note, <laughs> I will. I will hook you up. All right. <laughs> on that note, uh, I want to say thank you very much, Darla, yeah, for this joining was really us. Fun. Yay. 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 I had and to say when you said that you're going to be doing this, right. this kind of series, I just wanted to be in a corner for most of them. You know, yeah. just like listening <laughs> to all the conversations. You can watch them live on Twitch on Jane Con TV, mm -hmm. and also after we broadcast them, we upload them. So we're building a permanent archive. Mm -hmm. We'd like to. Talk to as many of the uh, people that were there in the '90s, oh, yeah. making there's, magic, the gathering, so try to get more. the try to get mm -hmm. the stories yeah. uh, out. And uh, Beverly, thank you for joining oh, me today, I do as usual. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yes, you have props. I think we have pictures. Um, yeah. So this was your first rule book, right? Yeah. First magic the gathering. That's the rule book from together. my very first. My very first magic set, as you can see, it changed a little bit since then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, look at that, the size of that oh, text. Man. And then a mini duelist magazine that was in a sales promotion or something like that. This was, uh, we put them in the first gift boxes. Oh, okay. To, to sort of, you know. Right. Hey, you could, you, could, you could be the duelist. That's yes. right. Little, and there's like special little stories and stuff. This was really fun. But this was just and something I brought this in to is, show Beverly. This is priceless. We have uh, that's better the pictures. One I'm jealous there's of. There's pictures <laughs> being posted. I have one that's uh, like a 3X. So you can mm -hmm. see. But, but this card, if you can't really see it, it shows uh, it's, a, it's a card, but it's about, it's the frazzled editor. And it's filled with all sorts of editing 
Um, and if a, you want to see, see what text <laughs> looks like after a great editor gets a hold of it, you can look at this uh, this image online. So, all right. Well, yep. that's all the all time we have for today. <laughs> so we have um, uh, next week. We will be back mm -hmm. April twenty fourth, same time, same bat channel, and our guest is going to be Jefferson, Jefferson. Dunlap. <laughs> he was Jefferson Shelley back in the day, but now he's Jefferson Dunlap, yeah, right? Life yeah. Changes. yeah, life, life changes. changes but yes. he is Awesome. I He's gonna think, have so many great I stories. think Jefferson mm -hmm. is the longest running now Wizards of the Coast employee. Maybe. Maybe him or Charlie. No, we talked about it. Maybe Bill Rose. Bill, or Bill Rose. Bill and Charlie both. But he's been yeah. there at least yeah. twenty five something he like twenty five. Started years. um the summer. That, he's still that there. I did. Yeah. And he's still there. He's still there. Summer ninety five and he's still there. Somebody can do the math. All right. So come back and um uh see our show next week. Yeah. And meet Jefferson. And uh, we'll be filming again here in the Caldea studio where we Cozy. make other films and <laughs> stuff. And I'll be back with Beverly and Jefferson. Yep. So thank you very much for joining us. See you next week. <laughs>